Greetings again in the wonderful and marvelous name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We do thank God again for you. Join us as our worship hour here at Piney Hill Baptist Church, Pastor Major H. Gilbert Sr. We're coming to you from On the Wall Ministries here in Alta Vista, Virginia. We, we do thank God for you. Join us again. Wonderful Sunday School Hour. Those who joined us in this morning, we're thanking God for your being in the building this morning. I know you're not here physically, but in spirit and in truth. You worship with us this morning. We're so glad to have you here uh, coming to us this morning at our worship hour. We got a little bit more music for you this morning. We're coming to you with John Edmonds Price Jr., Pastor John Price son. He's recorded this album a few years ago, and we're going to come uh, playing just a little song from that album this morning, and uh, we hope that this will uplift John and uplift us also. We don't own the rights to this music, but we just thank God that he's given us this music ministry through John Edmonds Price Jr. this morning. Uh, let's go into the Word of God this morning with a little worship. Come on now. Let's get some hallelujah going this morning. Come on. wonderful song this morning. It's just the beginning. His CD a few years ago that came out, we just want to uplift him. That's done a marvelous job down in Richmond, Virginia at the church, and we're just uh, giving God honor and praise for all that he's done. 
But this morning, we do have a, we're going to follow up in the same vein that we uh, taught Sunday school this morning. And we're in that same vein of, uh, this morning to try to get us to understand God's mercy and his grace. Is there a word from the Lord? This morning, we're going to ask you to turn your Bibles to uh, the book of Hebrews, the fourth chapter, verses 12 through 16. The book of Hebrews, the fourth chapter, verses 12 through 13, 16. We see friends piping in from Atlanta, and they're coming in this morning. We God bless you this morning. Uh, they're piping in from our church family this morning. We thank God for you and hope that all of you are doing wonderful this morning. Uh, Hebrews, the fourth chapter, verses 12 through 16. The word of God says, For the word of God is quick and is powerful and sharper than the two-edged sword, piercing even and dividing asunder the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open in the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Uh, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed in the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest that cannot be touched in the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly uh, unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. The word of God for the people of God. Let the household of faith say, Amen. You know, all of us, we have struggled with the fact that this world is filled with the haves and the have-nots, and especially uh, those that, uh, that seem to have always living outside of the will of God. And the have-nots that are living in the will of God, they're struggling every day just trying to make the best of it. And, and we find ourselves thinking about uh, who deserves what and who doesn't deserve what. We talked about it this morning in Sunday school. You know, I found myself thinking that way uh, many times myself, and I know you have too. You, you're wondering why people get there and you didn't get there and why did they get there and you didn't get it and why I got it and they didn't get it. We get caught up into having our, our feelings hurt because we don't think that certain people deserve certain things and I know I don't deserve it for all I've done for the Lord and, and we get caught up into that sometimes and, and when it's all said and done, we got to come down to the grips of the fact that, that none of us deserve God's Blessings, even us so good, good, good Christians. We don't deserve God's blessings. And, you know, God appoints everything in the world by two different principles. And one is grace and the other one is mercy. You know, by mercy, he doesn't give us when we deserve it. And, and by grace, he gives us when we don't deserve it. And, and by mercy and grace, God grants pity and favor on our lives and, and, and then many a times that we, we, we're guilty and we're miserable and we find ourselves getting things that we don't deserve and then sometimes when we think that we're so more highly than we ought to think, we, we, we're getting some things that we don't think that we deserve but grace removes the guilt of sin and mercy removes the misery of, that sins cause in our lives and without mercy and grace all of us would be most miserable and we'll be found guilty because all of us have have done some things that we know is not according to the word and the will of God. You know, that's the bad news. But the good news of it is, is that the that, that good news is that God made grace and mercy available to us to help us in our time of need. All of us need it. I don't know about you, but so 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 don't get so hard on yourself because of the fact that you're down sometimes and, and you need some help. Especially don't be so hard on your fellow brothers and sisters when they're down and out sometimes. And they are down because sometimes you get down and you're down sometimes because you get down. But when they get down, have the same mercy and grace for them. So God expressed us. And to show grace and mercy, and mercy and grace in our lives, so, so that uh, the, the daily needs of everybody can be met, and we can live our life uh, as a people of God, living to the fullness that God has in store for us, because we have shown mercy and grace just as well as God has shown mercy and grace to us. So this morning, I want to uh, our Thanksgiving message is uh, is 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 thanks for God's mercy and grace. Thanks for God's mercy and grace. Let us bow. Father God, we do thank you, Lord, again this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for just being our God. 
You sit high, but you look low, Lord. You look and cares about us, Lord. And, and we just thank you, Lord, that in spite of what we've done, in spite of what we've been through, Lord, that you've shown your mercy and your grace in our lives where we can be able to live our life to the fullness that you have in store for us. Lord, we thank you right now. Lord, we ask that you now touch your dear servant. Touch my lips where I'll be able to boldly speak those things that you have laid up on my heart, that I may be obedient to your word, that I may speak now those words unto your people, that they may, O Heavenly Father, be lifted up throughout these times that we're going through and understand that your mercy and your grace is still working each and every day in our life. Lord, we thank you and we bless you. In Christ Jesus' name, let the household of faith say amen. You know, as we celebrate Thanksgiving, and, and I thank God for his mercy and his grace. When, when we have, uh, have to deal with this word of God, and that includes all of his commandments, his statutes, and his ordinances. But let me remind myself and all of you that we all come up short. We've all missed them all. The books of the law from Genesis to Deuteronomy list so many things in the law that none of us can meet on a day-to-day -day basis. We come up short. James, the brother of Jesus, he comes along and tells us in chapter 2, he, he said that whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend one point is guilty of all. We talked about it in Sunday school. Verse 13 says, For he shall have judgment without mercy and will show mercy, and mercy rejoices against a judgment. That was our Sunday school lesson. Then Paul comes along in Ephesians uh, second chapter 8 and 9. He says that for by grace are you all saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man shall boast. See, see, we are all guilty, and we have nothing to boast about if we are living halfway in the will of God. If we got a halfway Christian life, it ain't because of us. It's because of the mercy and the grace of God. See, we all guilty. We all messed up. Paul goes on in Romans 7 and 18 and 21. We know that what in me, uh, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing uh, that, 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 that for, that is, that for to, to the will is present in me, but have to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would do not, and that the evil that would not, that I do. Now, if I do that what I would not, it is not more than, than I do it, but it's sin what that dwelleth in me. I find then another law, that when I would do good, evil is ever present. See, by our very nature, huh? our very nature, we mean and we nasty, we hateful, we ungrateful, we are slothful, nothing good about us, in us, in this flesh. But, but, but if, if we do good, it's only because of the grace and the mercy of God. And if we live another day, it's only because of the mercy of God. Old folk used to say, I should have been dead and gone and, 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 and left in my grave. All of us got that. Ha but if it wasn't for the mercies and grace of God, all of us would have been dead and gone a long time ago. But thank God that he looked beyond all of our thoughts and he saw my knees. Huh? And I don't know about you this morning, but I know that if it had not been for the Lord on my side to save me, huh? it was grace that saved me in spite of my sin, but it was mercy that kept me that I shouldn't have been dead and gone a long time ago. All of the efforts are fruitless to achieve some sort of self-righteousness in our lives. And But when by the letter of the law, we all come up short. So don't get me wrong, all of us should do our best to try to live a righteous life. Do your best to live close to God. But all while we understand that we miss the mark, trying to measure up to the law. Huh? When you try to cross every T and try to dot every I, no matter how hard you try, you miss the mark. Old Testament says, but we are all unclean things, all unrighteous as filthy rags, and we do not fade as a leaf, and our iniquity is like the wind has taken us away. See, it sounds mighty dreary, doesn't it sound real dreary? But the truth of the matter is, without God's mercy and grace, all of us be facing a sure death penalty in, in hell if it wasn't for his, if mercy hadn't showed up, if God's grace hadn't showed up, we would have a, a life penalty, death penalty in hell. See, our best efforts without the mercies and grace of God is just a waste of our time, a wasted efforts with little eternal gain. Our hope is 
uh, to spend eternity in heaven rests on the mercies and the grace of God. It's because of his mercy and grace that have we have our being in, in this world that we're in today, in, in the life here and the life hereafter. It's because of God's mercies and grace that, that we are found righteous in his sight. And only because of that, we can give God praise, glory, and honor for what he has done in our lives. So as we approach our text this morning, we find Paul uh, writing a letter to the Jewish Christians that, that were under fierce persecution in the time both Jews and the Romans uh, wanted to reassure them that, that everything was going to be all right because Jesus had not returned as soon as they thought uh, uh, the words that somehow they'd become disheartened and, and hard times had brought many of them to question their faith and many had considered going back to Judaism and, and many today we're wondering how soon will Christ return and, and when we see every day where the wicked is prospering and somehow our saints we're struggling every day trying to make it in the world and to sign up for this thing we call Christianity it is not only come with the perks of being a follower of Jesus but it also comes with the suffering of Christ you know we got to go through some stuff in order to follow and to stay in the footsteps of Jesus he said that in his word See, many Christian theologians, they preach about the perks, but they don't talk about the suffering. Uh, you can enjoy life in Christ, but you got to go along with the suffering also. Thoughts accepting Christ gives us blessings of God, of his promise that he gave to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. But it also comes with the struggles that Christ told his apostles that they would have to face in these last times, in these times time we're in. Paul wanted to encourage them that God's mercy and grace is sufficient to carry them through the difficulties and the trials and the tribulations of this life. Whatever challenges we confront as a follower and a believer of Jesus Christ, uh, we can be able to be assured that God is able to keep us through his mercy and his grace. See, many scriptures assure us that there's keeping power in our times of need. Old Testament scripture that Paul later on quoted, he said that I'll never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. That's good news right there. No matter what you're going through, no matter how bad the situation looks, no matter how bad the situation feels, it, it, God said that he will never leave us, nor will he ever forsake us. In this letter uh, to the Corinthians, Paul said, there has no temptation uh, taken you that is common to man, but God is faithful. That he will not suffer you to be tempted above that to which you are able and, and, and will with temptation also make a way for you to escape that you are able to bear it. See, if you can't get out of it, if you can't handle it, he'll let you get out of it. And if you, can, if you don't get out of it, he'll let you be able to handle it. And that's what God specializes in, in problems that seem impossible. Jesus told us in the Great Commission, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. See, our journey through this Christian life it will not be easy all the time. It's suffering going to come in our relationship one with another as long as we're in this world. Trials and tribulations going to come as long as we're on this Christian walk. So don't, uh, don't I have any witnesses in the house that understand that uh, God will take you through some stuff. You in some stuff right now. But God is able to bring you through it if you would only put your trust in him. It's his mercy and his grace will always be there for you. God's mercy and grace will be able to take you through any situation that you're in in this world. And, and, and he cares for us. He loves us enough not to overburden us. Didn't he tell you that? He'll take you through some stuff and allow you to get away from it if you have to. But if you can't get away from it, he'll allow you to be able to handle it. Oh, that, that's good news right there. God cares for us. Though tested and tried, we can make it through the fire. Do y'all believe that this morning? And the old hymn that said that he came out and said that you'll come out as what? Pure gold on the other side. Isn't that good news to know that all that you've been through, everything that the little devil had come at you with, God got some good news saying that everything is going to be all right. His mercy and his grace is sufficient to sustain you whatever you're going through and you're going to come out on the other side victorious. That's good news, ain't it? Uh, though it, through it all, we can have the blessed assurance that God will always be there. Huh? His mercy and his grace 
will always be there for us, pleading our case to be able to help us get through. So in our text this morning, we Paul lets us know that God can cut through this stuff that happens in our lives to be able to help us to see a brighter side somewhere. Huh? He, he, he'll assure us that, that nothing gets past the watchful eye of God. Our text says that for the word of God is what? Quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. It's piercing even unto dividing the sun of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. See, we, we can't hide anything from God. And, 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 and know some else? There's nothing that happens in our lives that is hid from God. He knows all about us. See, sometimes in our life we experience, we, we think that God has forgotten all about us. Oh, poor me, God, I don't know, you don't know what I'm going through. Lord, you don't know what I'm dealing with. God knows all what we are going through. He understands our situation. The word of God can pierce what, the deepest recesses of our mind, body, and soul and reveal to you no matter what uh, you do and no matter how bad things look, God will be able to see where you're at and what you're going through. He knows whether it's real or not. He knows whether your intentions are real or, 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 or they, they just appear to be good. You know, he knows everything, every idle thought that you have in your mind. He understands that. God got a way of cutting through all of the disguises, all of the makeup, all of the pretending that's down on the inside of us to be able to see what's really in our heart. The old adage of the Santa Claus said, he, he sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows when you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. If, if Santa Claus can do that, what about God? So there's no need of trying to fake God out. God, you can't fake God out. Huh? For goodness sake, don't do that. So there's no need of trying to fake him out either. huh? There's nothing uh, in, in trying to help your situation, then to come to God being real. Be real about your situation. You can't fake him out. He sees what you're doing, and he knows what you're, what you're doing. So just come to God straight up and to be able to let God know that everything. Plead for his grace and mercy in your life. God will be able to help you through those things. And, uh, he tells, Jesus tells him in Luke 12 and 2, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and nothing hid that shall not be known. See, covering up doesn't benefit you. It doesn't help your situation, did it? And don't help anybody else either. See, honestly, when it comes to others and ourselves is the best solution for your problem. Just, just be honest with yourself. How long has the church been involved in cover up? That, that we've been able to make us so powerless now that we can't help draw people to Christ. It was the cover-ups that made the church so weak. So we've got to quit covering up. We are powerless because of that. Instead of covering up, plead the mercy and the grace of God in your life. God already knows what you're going through. He already knows. So you might as well what? Fess up and tell God all about your problems. Nothing can escape that two-edged sword of God. Ain't that what the word said? Truth sees through everything, doesn't it? Uh, uh, Luke tells us that whosoever shall be spoken in the darkness shall be heard in the light. Then spoken in the ear, the closet shall be what? What shall be proclaimed unto the housetops. See, see, those holier than thou Christians, sometimes we, we need to quit playing around. Quit playing games and thinking God don't know all about your foolishness. Admit that, 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 that we know better than everybody else. We, 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 we get too good sometimes and not realize that we just a sinner saved by grace. But we got the goodness of God in our lives. We're more than that. But the thing about it is we still, if it was not for the mercies and the grace of God, we're just being the same old boat as anybody else. If not for his mercy and grace, then where would you be this morning? See, all we can claim is what Paul said. He, he said that for I've determined that, that to know nothing but what Jesus Christ and his and him crucified. See, see, if, if you're walking right, if, 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 if it's God's grace and mercy. If you're talking right, it was God's mercy and grace. And if you're living right, it was God's mercy and his grace. You know, and, and if you know a little bit, if you read the Bible and studied a little bit, and you think you know a little bit, it was what? God's mercy and his grace. 
And if you can remember and quote a few scriptures like a bunch of us can, it was what? It's God's mercies and grace. You can't claim none of that. It was God's mercies and grace. It's why you have your being today. And me, all of us, we're in the same boat. We got to give him glory and honor for all that he has done in our life. Then next, our lesson tells us that what? That Jesus knows all about what we have to go through. Our text says that what? Seeing that we have a great high priest that is, that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with feelings of our infirmities, but in all points, tempted like we are, yet without sin. See, see, my problem with preachers is that we, we, we can be so robed up. You see, I'm in my casual. We can be so robed up and, or uncomfortable uh, to, to meet people where they are in life. We, we, we can't be disguised by our robes and our, all of this stuff that we dress ourselves in and not feel the infirmities of people. We, we cannot get ourselves so separated uh, by, by the inner and, the, and the, the outer chamber of the Holy of Holies and, and think that we are above everybody else. Huh? Jesus said that he was even tempted the same way that we were, but he did not sin. But we got to be uh, meet people where they are. Uh, we have to uh, uh, make ourselves uh, available to people. We cannot make ourselves so holy that we cannot relate to people's problems that they're going through. See, the world is going through hell right now. All this pandemic and stuff that we're going through and we can relate to this uh, imaginative world, this nirvana, that if we want to, but, but doesn't, it doesn't speak to people's problems. Our perspective of life is about, uh, it got to be much different than what, 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 what people are dealing with on a daily basis. Uh, our faith doesn't exempt us from going through some stuff in this world that we're living in. I don't know care how holy you think you are. See, many leave the church because of this false theology that's been taught that, that everything's good is going to happen to you. If anything bad, that you're outside of the will of God. Good things oh, happen to good people. Bad things happen to good people. Good things happen to bad people. He says he reigns on the just and the unjust. So we cannot uh, divide and categorize people because of what they're going through. Uh, you are going through some stuff and you didn't devalue your faith. So let's not devalue people's faith because they're going through some stuff. Everybody goes through some stuff. See, then there are others that are running to the church with the very reason of finding bliss and this imaginative life without problems. You're telling everybody you're coming to church, everything's going to be all right. Coming to the church will make your life eternal all right, but it doesn't exempt you from dealing with stuff in this world that we're living in. Our text tells us that Jesus experienced everything that we're going through. See, we're born, he, he was born like us, he grew up like us, he went to church with church folks like us, he was tempted and tried like us, he knew hunger and thirst just like us, he went through everything that we had to go through. He lost loved ones, he lost his earthly father, his, his cousin he was beheaded, and, and he had brothers and sisters that, that didn't, didn't, he couldn't deal with. Uh, he was tempted on every side, just like us. He faced temptation with sex, just like us, with the woman in the well. See, y'all wondering where I was coming from. He was tempted with the intimacy with the woman when she washed his hair, and, 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 and he, he dried her, her, his feet with, with, a, with, with a hair. And, and, and I told you a few weeks ago that he offered riches in position. You remember when the devil took him up to the high point? And he offered him everything. He experienced everything outside of committing sin. He went through everything just like you and I, but he didn't commit sin. See, he understands why we need God's mercy and grace. He understands that. He knew the difficulties of resisting sin, the lack of food and, and hunger and, and the lack of water. And when he was thirsty and no earthly father to talk to in his worst times of his life, church folks that turned their backs on him, friends that forsook him, family didn't understand him, and disciples that, that even walked with him every day, that, that they ran scared and even one betrayed him. He knew what it was to live in the world, that you had to go through the difficulties of life. He knew what it was to be around unkind and unmerciful folk. He, he knew that he couldn't find what, what he needed there in order for to make it. He knew that it would take mercy and grace 
of God to be able to make it in this world. He let us know that that was the way to find true happiness in this world. To understand it was mercy and grace that helped me make it through this life. Then finally, if we can't get it in this world, Paul lets us know that where we can find it. Whatever you're looking for in this world, if you can't find it down here, Paul is letting us know where we can find it. Our text says, let us therefore what? Come boldly unto the throne of God that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. See, Paul understood that because of our nothingness, our brokenness, that if not for the grace and the mercy of God, that all of us would be lost, huh? And because this condition that all mankind is born in, God sent his son Jesus into the world to die for our sin. In knowing and believing and accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we can have that confidence to come boldly to the throne of God to obtain what he has available for us, his mercy and his grace. The Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. See, because of the love that God had for us, he created in his image that through that by sin, we were separated from him, but by Jesus, we were reconciled by him to be able to come in full fellowship with our creator again. God's mercy and his grace put back everything that sin took away from us. We can now in confidence know that our salvation is secure in Christ Jesus. Paul writes to the church at Ephesus, according to the eternal purpose, which is purpose in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access to the confidence by faith in him. See, we can live with that assurance that God can supply all of our needs. Can you, do you know that this morning? We shouldn't have to question our salvation if we believe in Christ. We should be able to come boldly before the throne of God and have that faith that we are saved. No other religion can make that claim. You know, they depend on some earthly work in order to save them and to supply their needs. What they couldn't get in the things of the world, God made available through us, through his son, Jesus Christ, his by his what? By his mercy and his grace. See, Christ is the source of the mercies and the graces of God. And that's our source for it. Christ is the source for that mercies and grace of God. When we come boldly to God to accept Jesus, the byproduct of our faith is God's mercy and his grace to help us in our times of need. Ain't that good news, huh? So as we close this morning, as we come through this Thanksgiving weekend, we are so thankful that God's mercy and grace, through Christ's example, that we can show grace and mercy to others. Uh, mercy indicates a feeling of sympathy as part of the giver and gratitude for part of the receiver. Then grace indicates favor as part of the giver and thanks to part of the receiver. See, we should be so thankful and grateful for what God did to us through Christ Jesus. We should show favor and sympathy to others that we encounter in our daily lives. So many of us talk about what folks deserve, and I told you that earlier, but, but, but mean folk, sinful folk, uh, murderers and rapists and adulterers and liars and cheats, and they deserve what, 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 what they get. And many of us have thought that way. Then when I look at myself and I look in the mirror and then when I thought about what I deserve and what God had, 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 had shined mercy and grace in my life, oh, I, I should have been dead and gone. I could have been dead and gone. Huh? I, and if, if it had not been for the God, Lord on my side, I would have been dead and gone. Huh? It was God's mercy and grace that found me. It was God's mercy and grace that saved me. It was God's mercy and grace that kept me. And, 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 and because of his mercy and grace, 
God kept me from getting what I didn't deserve and, and what I did deserve. And that's what I mean when I say we don't want God to be fair with us. We want God's mercy and grace to come in and plead our case. When I stand before God, I don't want God to, to, to be fair with me. I want God's mercy and grace to plead my case. And I haven't been so good all the time in my life. And I ask God that, that don't give me what I deserve. I want him undeserving love. I want his undeserving grace. I want his undeserving favor in my life. If it had not been for the mercy and the grace of God, I don't know how I'd be this morning. Yes, I do. I know how I'd be. I'd be lost and I'd be in the world of sin today. But it was God's mercy and grace that came and saved me. Oh, Mississippi Mass Choir said, hey, your grace and mercy had brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you and I want to thank you and praise you too. It's your grace and mercy that brought me through. Thank you, Lord, for saving a son like me to tell the world that salvation is free. There were times when I just didn't do right and you watched over me all day and all night. Justice demanded that I should die, but grace and mercy said, no, no, we've already paid the price. And I was once was blind, but, but, but thank God now I can see. And it was because grace and mercy came along. It came along and it rescued me. Huh? If it wasn't for God's mercy and grace that rescued me from a life of sin, headed toward a sure hell, I know I'm not the only one in the house this morning. If it had not been for God rescuing you in that moment when you know that you know that your life would have been lost, and if it had not been for God's mercy and grace, all of us would have been lost. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, I know where I've been. The old song says, I don't know where I've been. I know where I'd have been if it had not been for the mercy and the grace of God being on my side. It was his mercy that found me, and it was his grace that saved me. And I thank God for his mercy and grace. If there are any witnesses in the house this morning, let's give uh, the Lord a hand clap of praise. Let's give God some shout out this morning, because God was good to us, even when we were not good to ourselves. It was not of our own, but it was because of what he's done for us on Calvary's cross. Those on our conference line this morning, let's give God some worship and praise this morning, because it was his mercy and grace that came and rescued us. We hope everyone had a happy Thanksgiving this weekend and never stop thanking God for his mercy and grace. Oh, it was his mercy and grace. Huh? Uh, am I, are y'all thankful this morning? I'm thanking God for his mercy and grace. Because his mercy and grace rescued me right at the nick of time when I could have been gone. I could have been dead. I, I could have been lost. But his mercy came and rescued me. And his grace saves me. Oh, that's enough to shout about it this morning. So let's make some noise in the house. Let's give God some glory this morning. Let's praise him because of what he's done for us and what he's still doing in our lives. Because I had, I'm, let me inform you this morning, mercy and grace is still at work in your life. Taking through you this difficult time, during this pandemic, during this, this plague, during this trial that we're in, it's God's mercy and grace that is still at work doing the work that will sustain us in these difficult times. God bless you. Is there one in our waiting audience this morning that does not know Jesus Christ? God's mercy and his grace is still pleading our cases. He says that if you would confess with your mouth, then believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, he said, thou shalt be saved. God is, has no desire that none is lost. His desire, he doesn't get any reward out of people being lost. He said that when heaven finds one, when, when one is saved, he says, heaven rejoices. God is looking for just one this morning to give his life, their life to him. Is there one this morning? If not, let us bow. Father God, we do thank you, Lord, for this word. We hopefully we've been able to say some things to encourage us. To let us know that in spite of the moments, in spite of the difficulties, in spite of the trials and the tribulation, the suffering that we're going through, it was the mercies and the grace of God that sustained us. Lord, we're thanking you right now for your mercy and your grace. We thank you so much for just watching over us. You said you'll never leave us, nor will you ever forsake us. And we're thanking you for that. 
God bless you, and may have another smile upon you. We'll see you again next week. Until that time, continue trusting and believing in the Lord and believing that in spite of the difficulties of the moment, in spite of the difficulties of the hour, that God is still at work. Be blessed. God bless you. See you again next week. See you then.